Let me thank you again for the for the introduction and also for inviting me to represent our team and the whole Gamma Star project at this uh, amazing workshop. Um, yeah, my name is Daniel Reinkels, um, as uh, Lucas already said, and I have nothing to disclose with regards to this presentation. Um, yeah, I'm working at uh, Fauna von Mavis in Bremen in Germany. And um, this is also where this Gamma Star framework was developed. Um, we recently finished building our new home. And because no one can visit us due to this can, uh, COVID pandemic situation, we at least tried to show it to you as often as possible. So this is our new building. And maybe at some time in the future, you will also be able to visit us uh, there. Um, but um, jumping into the topic of vendor in independent uh, pipe sequences and the Gamma Star framework, uh, we started the work on this framework like six years ago with a quite clear vision. We wanted to change the current very restrictive state of pipe sequence programming. So as you know, there are distinct software implementations of the same MI sequence for different scanners due to the heavily relying sequence development concepts of the different vendors or different um, uh, development environments. So this leads to redundant implementations on, of the same sequence over and over again, even for different systems of the same vendor. So eventually, um, this would result in limited reproducibility and, um, of course, exchangeability between the research sites using different MI systems of different MI vendors, and also to low comparability between the acquired images. So we think that it would be great to have a generalized MI sequence format that can be interpreted by slim system-specific driver software that is installed at the different MI scanners and then translates this generalized MI sequence uh, into the scanner-specific hardware events, allowing the same sequence um, file to be executed at various uh, different uh, systems. So that with the overall goal to achieve more harmonization and comparability in the acquired images because we do not have these uh, differences in the implementation of the um, of the MI sequence itself but we really can run the same exact same sequence at different MI systems. So but we did not really want to stop there so we also try to tackle some of the um, pain points of MI sequence development today. So we think that the implementation of MI sequences is a very sophisticated and complex task, and it quite misses the high level views, which would make it um, also accessible to, um, for non MI experts. So, the conventional approach of um, sequence development uh, makes programming of MI sequences increasingly complex and misses modular concepts in which you could easily combine or exchange parts of the pulse sequence. Mostly small changes often require adaptations in multiple modules where some modules then might need to handle too much responsibility. So often this results in such workarounds where you uh, need to touch multiple parts of your code just to um, do very subtle changes to your pulse sequence. Instead, we try to make it generalized, flexible, and also easy to use. So we decouple the module hierarchy from parameter dependencies and introduce a rule-based approach. So we define sequence modules as seen here with different rules on how to calculate the required parameters, but we do not think about the calculation order or strategy itself. That also helps us to make these modules more encapsulated and exchangeable. And um, all these rules um, that um, calculate the required parameters of such a module are written in the programming language Lua, which is very lightweight and uh, also easy to learn. So again, comparing the traditional approach on the left with a rule-based approach on the right, we can support kind of a more natural thought process with clear encapsulation, which makes it easier to reuse parts of the sequence instead of requiring the exhaust thought process when additionally being forced to really think about the calculation, calculation strategy and think about that the input parameters all need to be available when you want to calculate your next parameter and uh, follow exactly 
step by step a calculation strategy. So instead, we just define different rules. And then um, in gamma star, the calculation order is automatically resolved in an instantiation step that will form a directed acyclic graph allowing efficient calculation of all parameters. So the instantiated gamma star sequence, which is um, exported by our framework, would then consist of this module hierarchy and the uh, parameter graph that defines the dependencies and the calculation order and calculation strategy for each parameter. When executing or, or simulating such a sequence, um, this sequence tree is then traversed, starting at the root module, which you can see in, in red here. And um, yeah, then we traverse the whole sequence tree and each time a parameter is required or a new parameter value is set, we um, perform simple set and get operations of this parameter graph. So if we get, for example, this parameter, then the parameter knows uh, which input parameter needs to be available to invoke, again, get operations on these parameters. And so uh, resolve this parameter graph on the fly. So when hitting such a loop module, then uh, we just repeat the traversal for the um, underlying tree branch uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the loop length. And when hitting such a basic module here in purple, we will translate the uh, basic element to the according hardware event. So these basic elements are basically uh, events like ALF, pulses, or gradients that are then directly transferred to um, the hardware events. So this concept becomes a bit more clear when using the example of a very simplified gradient echo sequence. So again, we started the root module. We have here directly a line loop we loop over this line loop and collect all the basic elements, um, which are here depicted in purple, and um, put them directly into a, into a sequence diagram or uh, onto the scanner hardware. So we can see that um, each um, basic element is one of the elements you would know uh, from your sequence diagrams. Building such a sequence is uh, performed using our web-based Gamma Star front end. So there's an open version available at gamma star.mavis.fraunhofer.de, but you can also use this short link at the top of the slide. Um, it lets you explore some of our sequences in read-only view, so you can just click on one of these sequences, um, which are uh, some of um, our Gamma Star sequences, and um, then you would have a read-only view, which is um, completely uh, inside your browser. Um, but you could also download the Docker-based um, container right at, at the bottom here. And then you would be able to um, also use the, the front end uh, for editing your own sequences, but also to uh, edit our uh, MI sequences. So how does it actually work at the scanner? Um, there are three main parts involved. So um, our exported sequence structure, which is still in the form of a sequence tree plus the calculation graph, a scanner independent gamma star backend, which is um, like the sequence itself, completely written in Lua, and the scanner specific MRI driver, which is installed on, on the MRI system. Because gamma star um, sequences are not representing fixed hardware events, but a flexible uh, sequence representation, we are able to configure the sequence and protocol right at the scanner. Um, so that makes it feel a bit more like a product sequence. So we have this additional work uh, or this additional way back from the MRI scanner to, the, to our Gamma Star backend, which um, helps us configuring doing a sequence uh, so the user can really change protocol parameters at the scanner. This will then um, invoke um, different set operations in the gamma star backend, which will be performed at, uh, on the sequence tree. During one time, the MRI scanner then uh, asks the um, gamma star backend for the next stack of hardware events, which then advances the traversal of the sequence tree, calculates all required parameters, and sends the basic hardware events back to the MRI scanner. So to translate this, uh, such a gamma star implementation to other systems. Um, only this 
spe uh, scanner specific um, gamma star driver would need to be adapted. All other, um, uh, yeah, all, all uh, other elements like the backend and the C constructor, this is all scanner independent. Um, compared to the vendor implementation of different sequences, we can see a very high comparability to our results in phantom, uh, in phantom data. So uh, at the top, we see the vendor um, implementation and at the bottom, the gamma star implementation for a flash, a rare, an EPI and spin echo EPI sequence with yeah, a very high comparability and similarity. But also for in vivo acquisitions, we are able to match the win vendor implement implementation in image quality. And um, this is shown here, again, for the same uh, sequence types. Um, but we also have um, a rich library with a lot of different MI sequences available. So um, this ranges from simple uh, flash sequences to uh, EPI sequences, but also to more sophisticated sequences like uh, Pulse ASL or uh, pseudo-continuous ASL sequences. So one specific feature which we focused on during development uh, was the integration of real-time changes uh, of the MRI sequence during runtime. So we really wanted to have this way back from the acquired image or any other external source uh, to our backend to change the MRI sequence during the runtime or during the scan. So this is achieved by exploiting, again, the flexibility of the sequence tree and the parameter graph concept, which uh, can be adapted during the scan. So um, we edit this way back, uh, and we do so by synchronizing the sequence parameters that uh, should be changed via a feedback WebSocket server. So this would then be able to be accessed by the vendor reconstruction system, but also using Gadgetron or any other external source. Um, this becomes very handy when performing, for example, prospective motion correction to change the imaging geometry during the scan. We already did that um, by sending the, the raw data from the MRI scanner to an external computer running Gadgetron. And we performed image registration using the uh, also open source uh, insight uh, toolkit IDK. Uh, we calculated the uh, new slice position on, uh, and orientation, sent it to a uh, WebSocket server. And our gamma star backend then uh, was able to, to get the new slice position and orientation during the scan, um, all, 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 all time during the scan um, from this WebSocket server. Um, change the sequence tree and then execute the uh, next hardware events uh, with the new slice position and orientation. Uh, we evaluated this workflow using simple EPI sequences and uh, were able to minimize the residual motion to a minimum. So, so this is, I think, a five minutes long measurement uh, with the uh, six rigid body motion parameters. Um, you can see, a, a, you can really see a, a um, reduction of residual motion uh, after performing prospective motion correction in this uh, render independent scenario using Gadgetron, IDK, and Gamma Star. Um, but there are many more applications uh, that use our, our feedback workflow. For example, here on the left, um, we followed endovascular devices uh, with the imaging plane. Um, after automatically detecting the position, uh, position of such a guide wire, which was equipped with MRI markers um, that um, introduced these circular uh, negative MRI artifacts. Um, but we also implemented strategies for uh, correcting B0 field drifts um, that result um, or the, um, during, during uh, long measurements um, resulting from gradient heating, but um, also the external triggering of sequence events or synchronizing the control of external devices might be very useful. So with the last slides, I want to shortly focus on the high level use and accessibility. So we really tried to make Gamasta as modular as possible. Um, by encapsulating the modules and making them, them exchangeable without going deep into the sequence code. So that way we can quickly add elements like, for example, a fat saturation or sh change between different readout types without expert knowledge of sequence programming. Um, the user 
does not really need to take care about broken dependencies or timings because these are resolved automatically using the knowledge of the uh, calculation graph, which is exported um, or which is generated during the export of the sequence. So we really hope that this eventually will make uh, sequence programming more accessible to non-experts. So additionally, we want to change the thought process during the sequence development a bit. So um, normally you have to set all these, these little details of your gradients and define the gradient moments, durations, amplitudes. You need to uh, take care about the uh, calculation order and that all input parameters of a ca calculation are available at a specific point of your program code. Um, but probably what you're thinking uh, while doing so is something along the lines, rephrase the previous gradient moment or suppress this T1 value or position the case space center at the echo time. So we added a, the possibility to use an uh, iterative sequence optimization that automatically adapts the sequence tree to perform the action needed, which is defined by an object function. So you define this object function, which defines um, the goal uh, which you want to achieve with, for example, the gradient, and then we have an optimization step um, over um, the different parameters. And uh, for example, that object function could be nulling a moment at a spe uh, specific time. That way, um, yes, and um, after, after converging, uh, or only after converging, these elements uh, are then sent uh, to, the, to the scanner hardware. So, um, uh, if the, the object function is not converging, then obviously we continue with the iterative uh, optimization. And we can also add some constraints uh, to, to make it stay in specific ranges of parameter choices, which helps to gain more control over this process. So we use this concept in a background suppression scheme to suppress three different T1 values in a Pulse ASI lab application which could not be calculated uh, analytically. So the timing of the background suppression pulses is uh, here, as seen here, optimized um, during the traversal of the sequence to result in the desired suppression of T1 values, as you can see here. Um, on, the, on the right, you can see the related imaging results. So the top row shows an analytically calculated suppression of two T1 values of 700 and 1,400 milliseconds. And the bottom row will use the optimization to also add the suppression uh, of the CSF signal as also seen here in the images. And with that, uh, yeah, our whole team wishes you a wonderful Christmas time. Um, as a small gimmick, my colleague Simon implemented an MRI jukebox sequence to run music on the scanner using, using the Gamma Star framework. So we might hear what he implemented now. And yes, so thank you again for inviting me and a big thank you to my uh, colleagues for all the effort they've put into this project. And I'm very happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Daniel. A wonderful exit of the talk. Um, thank you very much for, for, for this very interesting presentation. Um, I, uh, I have a few questions of, um, if there are no questions in the chat, so um, first of all, to all participants, if you have questions, um, you can post them uh, in the chat or over this question and answer um, button. Um, first question: Which which scanners at the moment um, um, can you can you use um, Gamma Star with? Yeah, so and vendors. Yeah, at the start of the project, uh, we tried. Um, to, to apply for funding to get um, the simultaneous implementation for all three large vendors. Um, but that did not work out. So we started the project with a, um, a Siemens driver implementation. So um, we have the, the um, Siemens drivers for all the different systems. And um, we have then uh, continued with a, um, with a research site to implement a proof of concept for, for Philips. Um, with and um, we are currently uh, continuing this work 
uh, to really have a native gamma star driver for Philips. Um, and for GE, we are also in discussion about um, research projects um, um, to, to implement that driver. Um, but we could also run our gamma star sequences using the uh, our, uh, a Pulsic export. So we would be able to use, for example, for GE, the uh, Topi driver. Um, but yes, the goal would be to have native native driver implemented for all three vendors. Um, let's say we have one and a half of them, but uh, we are still uh, uh, trying um, to, or we're still on the way of implementing the uh, native drivers for the other, other vendors. Okay. And there are two questions in the chat. Uh, actually, one of them uh, I also wanted to ask. Um, um, Maybe the second one you can answer later on in the chat because we have to continue with the presentations. But the first one would be, what's the difference between um, Gamma Star and Pulsec? Yes, so I think we will hear a lot about uh, Pulsec also um, later today. And I think one of the, the main differences is that we uh, really have this, um, this flexible uh, sequence structure, uh, which allows us um, Con configuring and um, changing the sequence during during the scan and um, not executing like a fixed sequence um, to the to the um, MRI scanner. So we really had this in mind uh, during the project um, to be as flexible as possible, which also comes with a lot of uh, difficulties um, regarding um, yeah safety checks and so on. So. Um, we are also able to just pre-calculate the whole sequence and send the fixed sequence to the MRI scanner, which would then be uh, similar to a uh, PISIC sequence. But we also wanted to have this uh, real-time implement, uh, real-time feedback, these um, uh, interventional MRI applications. And yes, so I think that's the main uh, difference besides uh, a lot of other details, of course. <laughs> 